Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Finding Congruent Measures. Here we have line segments on a coordinate plane. We're going to find the measure of line segment GH, which is right here. I'm going to count the distance between the points, so 1, 2, so line segment GH has a measure of 2. There's another strategy I can use for finding the measure of a line segment on a coordinate plane. This time for line segment CD, I'm going to be subtracting the higher and lower values using their endpoints. So C is at point 0, 2, and D is at point 0, 0. I notice they have the same X coordinate, so I'm just going to subtract the Y coordinates to find the distance or the value. So line segment CD has a value of 2, and that means that line segment CD is congruent to line segment GH. Next I have line segment AB. I'm going to count the distance here between the points. 1, 2, 3, 4. So line segment AB has a value of 4. And line segment EF, I'm going to be using the other strategy. So I have E is negative 1, negative 3. F is 3, negative 3. And I'm going to subtract the higher and lower values using the endpoints. So when I write out the endpoints, I notice that the Y values are the same. And 3 is bigger than negative 1, so I'm going to write out 3 minus negative 1, which gives me 4. So I notice that both EF and AB line segments have a value of 4, and they are congruent. Next, we're going to review a little bit about how to find the congruency between the angles in a polygon when I have polygon congruency statements. So the measure of angle W is found here. I want to try to imagine flipping and turning that shape so it matches my original. And I notice that W and F have the same angle measure because they are congruent. But I also notice that W is written last on my second polygon in the congruency statement. And so is F. It's also written last in the first polygon in my congruency statement. So that's a faster way of finding my congruency. So the measure of angle W is congruent to the measure of angle F. Let's try that with the measure of angle XPR. Remember, I always want to look at the angle in the center, which is P. So that is written second in order. So I want to look at the second in order of my first polygon, which would be D. So angle CDE is congruent to angle XPR. And remember, if you wrote this a different way, that D needs to be in the center, or you could simply just write the measure of angle D. For my last one, I have the measure of W, X, P angle, and X is written first in order, so I'm looking for the first in order on the other polygon, which is C. So the angle W, X, P is congruent to the measure of angle F, C, D. And remember, C just needs to be in the middle. Now that I'm familiar with my congruency statements, I'm going to start finding the actual measure. So I'm going to be looking in my congruency statement. I see PR line segment is written in the second and third position. So I want to find the second and third position on my first polygon, which is DE. And that measure is 5 inches. So, so is line segment PR. Next, I have line segment RW written in the last two positions. EF are in the last two positions, and that measure is 12 inches. So, so is the measure of line segment RW. Line segment WX is written in the last and first position. So the last and first position on the other polygon is FC. So I'm looking at line segment FC with a measure of 8 inches, which is the same for the measure of line segment WX. And then last, I have line segment XP written in the first two positions, CD are in the first two positions, so that measure is 16 inches. I'm going to look now with my congruency markings. In case I do not have a congruency statement, notice that this second part is missing on this congruency statement. So the measure of angle A has one angle marking, so does the measure of angle L, and it is 72 degrees. So first I'm going to look at my position here, L is third, so I'm going to write A in the third position and then give it a measure of 72 degrees. For angle B, there are four markings. So four markings on my other uh, polygon is measure of angle N. So N is my last position, 
So B will be my last position and it gets a measure of 155 degrees because they have the same measure. Measure of angle C has three markings. So does J. J is in my first position. So C is in my first position and it has a measure of 58 degrees. I have measure of angle D, which has two markings. So does K. K is written in the second position. So, so will D and that has a measure of 165 degrees. Finally, we have the measure of angle E, which is also um, matching angle M because they both have a 90 degree symbol and there are no other 90 degree symbols in this shape. Um, so I know M is going to match with E in the fourth position and it is 90 degrees because it is a right angle. Last, I'm gonna do congruency statements for my line segments using the markings. So line segment JN is congruent to CB. ML has five markings, so it is congruent to EA. NM has three markings, so it is congruent to BE. Line segment LK has one marking, so it is congruent to AD. And line segment JK has four markings, so it is congruent to line segment CD. Let's recap. For line segments on the coordinate plane, you want to count the distance between the points or subtract higher lower values using endpoints. If you have a congruency statement for polygon side lengths and angles, you want to match the order of the letters in that congruency statement, or without a congruency statement, just look for congruency symbols. And then finally, the measure of angle is represented by this symbol, and it is asking for degrees. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in feel free to click to subscribe for this and other lessons. Until next time.